always go back and refer to anything. The PowerPoint itself will be posted also as a standalone. We'll start uh, with a quick round of introductions so everybody knows who's on the phone. Uh, I'm David Fields. I'm the City of Houston's Chief Transportation Planner uh, and the Impromptu Project Manager for the More Space Program. <laughs> Um, and what I'll do is I'll just go down the list of uh, who I see as attendees and ask you just to say hi, if you can say who you are, your name, and if you have something funny you would like to tell us. Um, and it looks like it's some version of alphabetical. So Angie. Hi everybody, Angie Bertno with the downtown district, and I'm not sure that I can really provide much to this meeting, but um, definitely want just to make sure I'm on the call so I can hear what's going on. Um, but we've been a partner with the city on this project um, for Main Street. So thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks, Angie. Melissa Beeler. Hi, I'm Melissa Beeler. I'm a transportation planner at the City of Houston Planning and Development Department. Happy to help. Kathy Bullock. I have to unmute myself first. <laughs> Hi, this is Kathy Bullock with Office of City Engineer, City of Houston. I attend this meeting, so I will make sure that if something coming through, I'll shot for review and approval, I'd be putting on a higher alert <laughs> so I don't get behind. Thank you. Thank you. Christina Campos. Hi everyone, um, I'm Christina. I am based out of the Houston Permitting Center and I'm one of the structural plan analysts and I'm also working with David in making sure that we're getting all the permitting done um, as far as code compliance and permits um, are concerned. And once again, happy to help. Thank you. Michael Howard. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Howard. I'm the Deputy Assistant Director over at the Houston Permitting Center over the Co-Development Group. It's a pleasure being here with everyone. And I am glad to see this thing is moving along. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Karun? Yeah, I'm uh, Karun Srirama. I'm a principal at Concept Engineers. We are a uh, civil structure engineering uh, consulting company here in Houston. We've been here in Houston for 28 plus years and uh, look forward to be of help. Great, thank you. Bruce thank Lambright. You. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Bruce Lambright. I'm the deputy building official for plan review. I'm here with uh, Daryl Sharp and Christina Campos. Mark Lilly. Hi, I'm Mark Lilly. I'm with the Inside Haynes Whaley Structural Engineering, and uh, we're here to help. You know, anybody that needs some help in this area, and uh, I guess something funny. I don't have my cat filter turned on, so. <laughs> <laughs> well Brandon Mosley. Greetings. My name is Brandon Mosley. I'm um, one of the City of Houston Transportation Planners. Brandon, Daryl Sharp. Hi, uh, my name is Daryl Sharp. I'm here. I'm a Plan Analyst Supervisor at the City of Houston. I'm uh, Christina's uh, supervisor for a couple more weeks. She's just been promoted to a supervisor herself. Thank hey, you. Hey, and um, again, I'm helping her on reviewing the projects. Thank you. That's great news. Uh, and a phone number ending in 3249. Can our mystery caller identify themselves? <laughs> or if it's easier, you can put in the chat who you are. I think they're on mute or they yeah. have the microphone on. Uh, well, if whoever is calling in can at some point during the session, let us know. We're just trying to keep track of everybody. And with that, uh, we're going to go ahead. The presentation is not very long. Uh, Christina and I are going to tag team on this. Um, can everybody see a uh, PowerPoint on their screen? I'm having a little difficulty with presentation mode, so it's going to just have to stay like this. There's no animation, so it doesn't matter. Um, as background, City Council passed the More Space Main Street program a few months back. 
Uh, we're going to go through all the details and have plenty of time for questions. Um, but after a while, it seemed like some of the businesses, the restaurants and bars might uh, be looking for a little more guidance on the details of the permitting process specifically. So we're hosting this se session uh, for the overall information, but also so you can all ask questions and you can have all the details you need. Um, and Christine has been amazing uh, on the the permitting part of it. Um, so don't feel like if you don't ask your question today, the city's gone and we're not going to talk to you anymore. Uh, you know, we've been very uh, collaborative uh, to get it going. So feel free, you know, if you think of something a little bit later, uh, the contact information will be on the last slide. You can always reach out to us. Okay. With that, we'll get going. So we'll start with the program introduction. Um, so why did we do the more space program? Um, during COVID, restaurants have limited occupancy. Bars are officially closed. You can interpret and figure out the, the state rulings on that, however you will. Um, but the reduced occupancy means reduced sales that was hurting Houston's economy. And nowhere was a film more than downtown uh, where not only uh, were there the limited restrictions, but our first program that let restaurants put tables out in parking lots, that's just not available on Main Street. Restaurants and bars don't have their own standalone parking. Um, so we needed to do something special for this area. Uh, so we came up with the More Space Main Street program, which runs from Main, uh, Main Street from Commerce to Rusk. You're all probably aware there's a train running right through the middle of it. Uh, so there was a bit of uh, a lot of discussion with a lot of our partners, including the downtown district uh, and Metro, and we're very appreciative of all their help. Um, the idea is that restaurants and bars will be able to set up tables in the roadbed and the sidewalks will still be used for pedestrian space. This is a pilot program. The city's never done anything like this at this scale. So it's a pilot that city council has approved through the end of March 2022 to give you all plenty of time uh, to figure it out and uh, we'll see what we can learn from it. Who can participate? Any bar or restaurant on Main Street from Commerce to Rusk. Uh, it's officially uh, kicking off during these COVID restrictions. Um, it's restaurants and bars while the regulations of the state and the county allow those businesses to be open. So if the county, which it still says, says bars cannot be open, you can't go, if you're a bar, you can't put a table in the street and say, look, we got around the regulation. Um, and any property that has different businesses on two floors, that structure is considered one and we figure out how you can share your space. So how much space is available? This was one of the longer conversations we had between planning and public works and the fire department and many other partners. We went through and designated block by block on those seven blocks how much space is available in front of each uh, building. So the website with the um, design guidelines is on the screen right now on the bottom that has one of these illustrations for each one of those blocks so you can very clearly see where the blue more spaces are spaces available the reason not uh, the whole blocks are not available what i alluded to earlier is because there's a train running through the middle we don't have a whole lot of flexibility for where fire department equipment can pull up so every block every building was negotiated with the fire department based on where their equipment is. We tried to make it as fair as to every restaurant and bar that we could. Um, so it, and it, any changes will have to go through that entire process again. So we, we highly discourage changes on the space. Um, there should be plenty for everybody we've been able to contact uh, who might want to participate. There are a couple of unique zones and, and I don't know if you can see my, my cursor uh, in the middle of this illustration, sometimes we had to leave uh, some uh, buffer space so that uh, the fire department can actually get between, uh, um, get their equipment all the way to the building in between the more spaces. 
Um, and if you look at this and you're like, I don't know what these guys are talking about, just call me. I'll walk you through specifically what is available for your block. Um, the general idea was you should have access to what's in front of your storefront. So, you know, just straight out in the road. Uh, there are a few tweaks, uh, and but emergency services do trump any additional space we're going to provide. You may be eligible to expand a little up or down the street, depending on who your neighbor is, um, but that is going to depend on your conversations with your neighbors, if they're going to use it, and that we can get confirmation on that. Businesses may share space as long as your TABC permits allow it. And that's going to have to be a discussion between you and TABC. They have different rules depending on if you're a bar, if you're a restaurant. Um, if they're good with it, that's OK with us. Um, we do highly encourage you only ask for the amount of space you're really going to use. Uh, one big part of this project is to activate Main Street, not just to have a lot of dead uh, space with nobody using it. Uh, you know, so that that is the priority. And uh, the fire department, all our emergency services do reserve the right that if something happens and they need to reconsider if, uh, you know, equipment needs to be changed, that we're going to come back and say, OK, emergency services trump all. Some examples of what you could set up. Uh, these are from other cities uh, that have done this before, including in Toronto, the top right, where they actually have a very similar cross section with the light rail right in the middle of it. We'll get into some more details about this in a sec. Um, we do want to be clear who's going to do what in this process. So at the city, we uh, walked the program through, we developed the ordinance, we brought it to city council, they approved it. Uh, planning and the Houston Permit Center are going to work together to We've, we've provided the application. We're going to review and approve those with the permits. Our friends at Public Works I have a uh, traffic maintenance plan with traffic signal retimings and new uh, traffic signage for when we're ready to do closures so that people who are driving understand they, where they can and can't be. Uh, the downtown district, uh, if I haven't said it before, they've been amazing partners. Uh, they're going to also implement specific signage uh, about the program. They're offering funding for ADA ramps, uh, and they're going to install uh, water filled barriers at each end of the street so it's clear cars can't go up and down those parts. And then the businesses, you're going to design your space. Uh, the application, uh, I'm sorry, the guidelines, uh, as I mentioned before, are on that web page. You're going to submit your application, and we've done it many different ways. You can submit directly into our system, or you can uh, do it all as a PDF and email that to us. Tell us what's easier for you. Um, you are going to address any issues you have with the state liquor licenses with TABC. We will not be involved in that in any way. They do have a very specific permit they created during COVID, which should make your lives easier. Um, you're all going to purchase and establish the fencing. We're going to go through that with the specs. Uh, you're going to place your furnishings in ways that don't obstruct ramps or the pedestrian right of way. You'll be responsible for training your staff on procedures and safety, just like inside your space. You know, you are effectively operating here. Uh, you can uh, put in site specific signage. Uh, we'll get to that in a sec. And in the off hours, you do need to store or lock down your equipment. We're not coming out every night and taking care of that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through some more of those engineering details that we need to see for the permit requirements, and I'm going to hand it over to Christina at this point. Can I interrupt one second, David? Sure. I am so sorry, but how can you're I screw something up? No, no, not at all. It's just how you're speaking. It kind of feels like we're talking to the businesses. <laughs> oh. And I believe for the, you know, the point of today's discussion is inviting a small group of small engineer firms on board that can help some of our small businesses through their process just because they don't have access to a lot of these resources. So I just wanted to clarify before we kind of finish up that that's kind of the purpose here. They're not they're not building these spaces necessarily and that's a great point. Yeah, um, and we're guessing the engineering firms who are on will be working with the businesses doing those pieces. I should have said earlier, we just wanted you to have the full context 
for yeah. what's going to need to be done. Uh, but I think Christina's piece now will probably talk a lot more to your needs. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying, Angie. And, and to kind of piggyback on that, um, we kind of have a, one project already that's kind of, you know, we're setting it up and kind of moving it through the process. And I have been working with both the business owner and I have included, you know, the designer and the engineer, and we've all been kind of working together. And so that's kind of my portion. I deal with more the technical aspect of it. Um, so we'll go right into it and, you know, at the end, if once again, you have any questions, we can go over that. Um, so we'll kind of start off with our perimeter fencing. Um, we have our kind of per perimeter fencing slide one. Um, and I kind of mentioned this to David is that a lot of the stuff that is in the ordinance is very clear and straightforward. And me on the other side of the desk, looking at the ordinance, it helped kind of guide me and kind of knowing like what you guys have established and um, you guys did your research because a lot of it does reference our construction code. And just for background, when we review these things, it's for life safety and we make sure that we review the technical aspect of it and make sure that, you know, um, that these kind of minimum requirements are met for the purposes of life safety as well as construction. Um, so for the perimeter fencing, of course, you're required to have the perimeter enclosed on all four sides with the exception of the patio entrance. Of course, it has to be at least 18 inches away from the metro delineated right of way. And so um, that kind of first diagram is really great and kind of illustrating, you know, that minimum 18 inches and then, you know, the of course, the, the perimeter fencing on all four sides with the exception of that five foot entrance. Of course, you're, you're required to have that five foot entrance so people can egress in and out of that um, area. And then of course, outside of that perimeter, you know, fencing opening, of course, within those openings on that, on the, in this case, the metal fencing, you're required to not allow more than a four inch diameter spear. I know this is very specific, but the, kind of give you a background. We want to make sure that, you know, it's safe for children. We don't want children to, you know, stick their heads in there. That's the main reason that exists in the code um, or anybody getting stuck. Um, and then, of course, making sure that they meet the minimum design loads um, for fencing as in our IBC, um, which is in section 1607.8 um, for guards, you know, you're required to resist the loads, which is 50 pounds per linear foot. And then the concentrated load of 200 pounds applied in any direction. This is for anybody that might be leaning on it um, or to make sure it doesn't fall over. And then for the second half, of course, you know, um, the fencing all has to in be included with the dimension. So when we review these drawings that are prepared by designers or engineers, um, that they do illustrate these conditions. Um, so of course, we have a minimum height of 42 inches from the top of the highest adjacent street or platform, depending on which way you go. Um, the first one that we've had is just on, on the, the street, but of course you have that option with the platform if you are going to exercise the platform option. Of course, you want to have flat tapered edges between a quarter inch, half inch thick. We don't want sharp edges. We don't want people hurting themselves. That just kind of creates a whole nother liability. Um, and then of course, eight to 10 inch anchors through the pavers. Um, that's to make sure that that perimeter fencing is anchored. It's not gonna blow over. It's not gonna, you know, we know that sometimes we're prone to flooding. It's not gonna, you know, float away. Um, and then of course, we're, we, want it, we want it to be designed so that people aren't sitting on the fencing because we also know that that is a, a hazard. And so the whole purpose is, you know, life safety and eliminating any possible hazards that could happen in these instances. And then, you know, we have the option to, so you have, you can just do the perimeter fencing, but you also have the option to, in addition to the fencing, have a ramp. Um, these are required to uh, accommodate the ADA. Um, I know David and I kind of, I'm going to open the floor to you because you know more about the ADA aspects than I do. Um, so we'll get to the two kind of height versions, whether in the street or on a ramp in just a second. I'm sorry, uh, in the street or on a platform in just a second. But right now we're just talking about if space is on the street level itself so that there'll be a differential between where the tables are and the sidewalk from which uh, lets out on your restaurant. In that case, we do need an ADA accessible ramp. 
and we, we have gone through a lot of different ways to try to make it as easy as we could. So if you are a business with direct access to the existing corner ADA ramp, you're good. You just need to put also an entrance uh, like we had said on the sidewalk also uh, facing towards the ramp. If you're not at the corner, um, you need to put a ramp that goes from your area on the sidewalk down into the more space into into the space on on the uh, street level and neighboring businesses may share one of those ramps if you're within 20 feet of each other down at the bottom. Um, if neither of those are possible because the space is too small, something is quirky um, and you've also decided you're not going to do the level platform, you're going to go down in the strip space, we will come out and just double check that, see if we have any other ideas. We'll work with you to make sure we just can't figure it out. And if it's not possible, we will waive that regulation for you. But we do have to do due diligence. It's a promise to the mayor's office of persons with disabilities. And we, you know, we'll take those couple of steps to work with you on it. And so this kind of outlines the two or the instances in which ramps should be constructed. Um, I know the first project that I got, they were lucky enough to be in close proximity to the ramp, so they weren't proposing any new ramps. Um, but in the case that you will be proposing a ramp for access, um, once again, minimum, um, you know, the minimum requirements are going to be, you know, it has a maximum slope of one, a ratio of one to 10. Um, the width has to be 48 inches with edging um, to prevent, you know, any will ensure clearance of the landing, right? And then to prevent any, you know, going off course or falling off the ramp. Um, so of course the edging has to be two inches in, in minimum height. And these diagrams do a really good job at kind of showing each component, right? Because the ramp is just a, a series of components. So the slope, the width of the landing, the two inch um, height of the edging. Um, and then of course, each landing should be 48 by 48 inches um, at the top with the edging of six inches minimum height, no slip protection. Um, and then the minimum width of 12 inches between the ramp and the gutter, which is for the purposes of drainage. Um, and then of course, once again, we have to make sure that they are attached to the concrete um, to prevent any displacement by winds or flooding. Um, and then they cannot restrict any access um, to manholes, box, uh, valve boxes, standpipes, fire hydrant, which kind of piggybacks on, you know, fire access. Anything that we would have to access for either the purposes of maintenance or, you know, uh, emergency response, then, you know, just know that if it is in the way, they also, there's a risk that they could, you know, move it or you know if there's an emergency and they need access they can either drive over the ramp or have it removed and then now kind of going into the platform um so this is kind of that second option that's exercised is if you do want to construct the platform in this way and i think that diagram kind of um, shows how the platform is kind of raised to meet that kind of edge of the sidewalk as opposed to being directly on the street. Um, this kind of has more um, requirements. So you would need to design the platform so that it can carry the loads um, as shown in our code. Once again, uh, section 1607.1 for assembly purposes, they have to have, they have to maintain that, that live load of 100 PSF, which is pounds per square foot, um, as required, that is required to be engineered. Um, once again, if you do construct the platform, it does have to accommodate for any stormwater runoff in the roadway, um, at the curb, and along the street gutters, enough to address the storm rainfall rate at eight inch per hour. Um, and then if you decide, and of course, you know, you have to kind of design what materials you're going to be using. So if you're going to do, you know, wood framing, then, you know, it, it has to be located within eight, 18 inches from the ground or in contact with the ground. Masonry or concrete should be constructed using the preservative treated materials. Um, once again, this is all in our building code sections 1807.1.4, 2304.11, which um, each have the different material types. Um, and then it is imperative that when you use the preservative treated wood platform, joists have to maintain that clearance along the curb to allow for the stormwater because um, 
typically, you know, we worry about the flooding or we worry about that kind of water buildup. So we want to make sure that we're not affecting that in any way. And then going more into kind of like the hazards, we want to make sure that there's not enough, there's not more than a quarter inch gap between the planks. Um, that could be a trip hazard. Um, we want to make sure that it's flush, you know, and even though that is an ADA requirement, that also is a life safety. We don't want trip hazards. So, you know, we don't want a gap too large or, you know, the curb to kind of have like a, a groove in it to where people can trip and hurt themselves. Um, once again, the platform should also adhere to the per perimeter fencing requirements. Um, and then, of course, same thing. Um, you don't want to restrict any access to manholes, uh, valve boxes, stamp pipes, anything, uh, any water meters, anything that is um, kind of imperative to either emergency response or maintenance. Um, and then let's see. So yeah, you will. So I once again, you are required to have an engineer design the platforms, include a seal sign. And as far as when an engineer does, and you guys are familiar with, you know, the Texas regulations that if you have your seal, you got to sign and date. Um, and we make sure that you know the they have an active license and they are registered in the state of Texas. Um, let me see. And then. Just know once again that that you guys are, you know, we won't assume any responsibility if, you know, we it, it is destroyed in the case that they do have to, you know, access somewhere and the only way is through there. And then I think the last part is kind of the furniture and to touch again on that. Um, the umbrellas we so. That's kind of a touchy one because it is movable and we kind of went internally as far as code enforcement is concerned and you know it's movable so we don't we're not i'm not going to ask for it on your plans i just make sure that you stay within these parameters so you know of course the material design of the furniture should be for outdoor use um you know you, you should make sure that it's going to be able to withstand any of the elements um well, you do have to put it away at the end of the day. You have to secure it when it's not in use. We're not allowing any tents or canopies. So as of right now, you're allowed tables and chairs, any furniture um, and umbrellas only. Um, and then, of course, the umbrella must be placed and kept outside of the safety zone. That's for any of the wires. Uh, we want to make sure that you're, you're, you know, you're staying away out of that right of way. Um, you want to make sure that the bottom of the umbrella is not lower than 95 inches above the top of the light rail tracks. Um, and then, which I, I don't think that might, that's gonna be the case. Um, and then umbrellas should be anchored, of course, um, weighing 10 pounds for every one foot of canopy width. That means a nine foot umbrella needs a 90 pound base. Just so that once again, we don't want anybody hit by an umbrella or, you know, if a strong wind comes in, it's, it, and it's all very, you know, basic life safety. And just one thing to add to this, this was one of those uh, unique features of having the train coming right down the middle of the street. Uh, every time that train comes down, the the uh, train conductor has got to have a certain visual space so the umbrellas couldn't block that they'll be able to see pedestrians at the corner, but also that they move air as they come through and we want to make sure those umbrellas don't go flying when they do. And then, of course, any signage, uh, traffic, pedestrian co uh, control devices, that is all required to conform to, you know, our, our applicable codes, the, you know, the Houston Public Works, Texas Department of Transportation sign manual. That's um, separate, but it is regulated. Um, so, and here is uh, the project web page, our email address, and our phone number, so you can get in touch with us. We'll get back to you immediately to go through any of it. Um, I want to make sure I give a special shout out uh, to the folks in Public Works and the Permit Center. They came up with all of these specs through a lot of investigation and research and detail with the intention that when you all came to design, it would be super easy to know exactly what they were looking for. So hopefully uh, this does exactly that and that's going to save a bit of review. Yeah, I, I really would like to second that. I, I'm, you know, I came at the tail end. I wasn't, you know, kind of involved in the beginning, but it makes my job so much easier. And I always say, you know, I really do want to approve and get 
you guys going. Um, so anything that we can do to kind of make that move faster and you guys did a great job. Um, so with that, I think we'll just open it up to questions or uh, I should say anybody either else from the city or from downtown district with anything that they noticed we forgot to mention or you'd like to add in. Yeah, I just really want to quickly just input if and maybe I've totally misunderstood, but I didn't think so. This is an invitation only presentation to some select small engineer firms that we can refer businesses to if needed. Um, is that correct, David, or are there other people on this call other than the folks that Lonnie had outreach to? Those are the only people on the call. However, okay. this presentation and all the information in the PowerPoint will be up on our website. Sure. So any other firm who decides they want to take a look at this, this should not be implied as a an endorsement by the city to any specific firm to any specific you get this work if you sign up for this program this isn't a certification this is just an information session okay so i have a question then about that because where the impetus for this was that we had a business who had designed their street patio submitted it to the city and then we came to find out that they didn't have an engineer stamp on their designs and so and they're like you know gosh we haven't worked with an engineer since we you know probably built out our space years and years and years ago and a lot of these small businesses um don't have some of those contacts or you know they certainly didn't have to go to this extent when they were doing sidewalk cafes etc mm -hmm. so um our intention was to be able to make some referrals i mean that's kind of you know what we do here at the district as well and we thought in order to do that to have people some firms understand the program um, thus being able to be better resources so david am i understanding that we are not using this list to give to businesses as referrals or we can do that but you're not going to do exactly. that or how's that working? right the district can refer anybody you've had conversations they're ready to go uh, and that's fine that's up to you the city cannot identify certain businesses without having a much deeper process. Um, and okay, so if a business then, yeah. and usually businesses outreach to me probably first, but in case they do outreach to you first, then you always can just swing them back to me then. Correct. Okay, yep. great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. David? Yes, this is Hi. I have a question. Sure. This uh, presentation, by the way, I mean, uh, thank you. It was a very good presentation, very informative. Uh, are you going to post this presentation uh, at this uh, Main Street website? Yep. Okay. Both the PowerPoint as well as the video. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. And if you're going through it and you know, you're not sure, don't guess, don't feel frustrated, just call us directly. Uh, we've been working with everybody every time they've called. Okay. And uh, by the way, Christina, good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I do have one question. Sure. Are these extra spaces intended to be permanent or only for a certain period of time during COVID? So these, the pilot project is authorized through the end of March 2022. So a year and a month and a half or so about they are. This is not meant to be a permanent structure. OK. Yeah, the program is a direct response to COVID and allowing businesses to expand their spaces and for customers to be able to have more opportunities to dine or drink outdoors, thus feeling safer. Other questions or comments? Okay, well, uh, we appreciate you joining us today. We hope this is helpful. We hope uh, you can then go back to some businesses and say, look, we have good sense of what they're looking for. Uh, you know, we're ready to go. Um, leave that up to all, any of you. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. We want this to be as easy to get going as it can we you know we do have a couple of applications going 
um, and hopefully this will get us there and get Main Street up and going. Once again, thank you very much, David. Yeah, thank you. It was a great presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, and we will get this up to the website, those two files, uh, in, uh, as quickly as we can. Um, and thank you to our partners, uh, the Downtown District, Public Works, Permit Center. Uh, thank you all. This is a team effort. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Okay. Thanks, everybody.